All right, so what we want to do is we want to find the inverse sine of radical 3 over 2, right? Um, a couple things we need to remember about what exactly is our inverse sine of our thing. So one thing actually I want to remind you guys of is, you guys remember, if we're trying to find the sine of an angle, right? Of any angle, if we're trying to find the sine of that angle, remember that's going to represent our y over our r as like a, as a, like a coordinate point, right? Where r is going to represent the hypotenuse of like a triangle. Well, remember, when we're dealing with the unit circle, our r is 1, right? So therefore, we're really just dealing with the y value of a coordinate point on the unit circle. Now, I'm actually going to be finding the inverse. So what we're going to be doing is, to find the inverse, I'm going to say sine inverse of my y coordinate equals theta, equals my angle. So when I'm trying to find the inverse sine of this point, this is my coordinate, this is my y coordinate point of a point on the unit circle to find my angle theta. So to do this, what I'm gonna to have to do is figure out what coordinate what angle has a coordinate point of radical three over two. So I'll take a look at my unit circle. Remember we're kind of dealing with two points. The first one is pi over six which is radical 3 over 2, comma, 1 half, uh, pi over 4, which is radical 2 over 2, comma, radical 2 over 2. And the last point we have is uh, 1 half, comma, radical 3 over 2. Right? That's like the first chord quadrant of your unit circle. Is everybody with me? Okay, I just did the unit circle by memory, just for at least the first quadrant. So which one, where is my y coordinate for this going to be radical three over two? That's going to be which point? This one, right? Now, is this the only time though um, when my y coordinate is gonna be radical three over two? No, there's actually this point over here, right? Which is negative one half radical three over two. So I actually have two possible angles that I could use. It could be this angle, which is pi thirds, or it could be this one, which is going to be 2 pi over 3. Now, what we're going to do, though, is we need to remember when we're finding the inverse of a sine function, there's a constriction that we have, which I spoke about when I showed you guys with the graph, and I flipped that graph over, and we could saw the restrictions. The restriction of the sine graph is my angle has to be between pi over 2 and negative pi over 2. So my angle has to be between... Um, negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. So therefore, can this angle work? No. no. So I can simply just kind of erase this and say, all right, well, here's where my y value is uh, pi over 3. So what exactly is this angle? Pi over 3 is radians, or 60 degrees. You just leave it at pi over 3. Yeah, so I'm going to be asking for the pi over 2, so being between pi over 2 and negative pi over 2 is part of what rule? It's part of your restrictions on your sine, on finding the inverse sine. Oh, okay. Okay, so when you're finding the inverse sine, it has to be, your angle has to be between um, your va those values. That's your answer. That's your answer. Yeah, because remember, you're trying to find the angle, right? If I say sine of an angle equals y, what I gave you was, I gave you y. So we're trying to find the angle. So we're, that's where we're working backwards. Mm -hmm. How did you get part of the count, Just count three? No, remember. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. No, no, no. No, remember. Um, remember, this one was angle was pi over like six. Um, I don't know. It's really just kind of memorized. If you remember, there's on our three points. Okay. This one was pi over 4. This one was pi over 3. Those are like your three points for your first quadrant. We had, we had pi over 6 was the first one, pi over 4, and then pi over 3. That's why I knew that was just going to be Good. Any last question?